all throughout the United States that is so anti-Washington these days. Bill Arkin, what's a super user? <laughs> Well, what we discovered in the course of our investigation is that uh, not only are there top secrets, but there are various compartments above the level of top secret, which are utilized by each of the intelligence agencies and the military commands uh, to compartment what they do. And, that, and, and intrinsically, that's supposed to be to protect information. But in reality, what it does is it keeps programs from being revealed to other agencies. And, uh, uh, in theory, above it all, is supposed to be the director of national intelligence, an office created in 2004 to finally solve the problems of 9-11. But what we found was that even the director of national intelligence and even the undersecretary of defense for intelligence, the top intelligence official in the government, uh, that, that, that they don't have full visibility on each other's programs and they don't have full visibility on everything even within their own agency. And there's this thing called super users, people who are designated specially, who have the ability to reach into all of the programs of all of the government. They actually have special logins, they actually have special computers, and there's only a few dozen of them, as far as we can determine, throughout the entire government, only a half dozen or so in the Defense Department and only a half dozen in, in, in the Directorate of National Intelligence. And we've spoken to some of those super users who themselves say, I don't have enough hours in the day to look at all the programs of the U.S. government. I don't have enough, I don't have enough time to read all of the material that I am authorized to read. And so you can really see in a very vivid way the dysfunction of government uh, through this little anecdote. Bill Arkin, talk about the warning, uh, the letter that was sent around uh, to uh, the intelligence community uh, from Art House and explain who he is, warning them of this series of pieces that you and Dana Priest are doing. Well, let me just make it clear, Amy, we've been working on this for two years. Uh, we've been engaged in interviewing people from the government and inside this world for two years. We've conducted over a thousand interviews, uh, talked to hundreds of people many multiple times. Uh, they were well aware of what we were doing, and we formally briefed them about this earlier this year. Uh, so for them to come out at the 11th hour and somehow say that they are uh, alarmed by what we're going to put out. Uh, to me seems to be classic cover your ass. I, I can't take it in any other way, because we ourselves have gone through a massive internal review process, both fact-checking and also looking at, at, at anything that could be detrimental to the national security interest and to the national interest. And I'm completely confident that we've done a rigorous job. I'm completely confident, through the use of uh, numerous outside counsels at The Washington Post, people who are insiders to the system, helping us to make sure that we were able to pr produce the most granular picture we possibly could of this gigantic organization, but yet at the same time not put anybody's life at risk. And I, and I have to say at this point, I feel like The Washington Post has a better understanding of this overall problem than the government does. What is it they did not want you to print, Bill? Well, they always don't want you to do whatever it is that's going to bring them, uh, you know, that's going to disrupt their day. Uh, you know, the, 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 the government, we ask them repeatedly to give us specifics, to tell us what it is that they didn't want us to show. And only one government agency was actually able to come back to us and specifically explain to us why they didn't want us to reveal something. And, and, and they made a, a reasonable argument to the editors, and the editors decided that we wouldn't. This is such a rich area that we felt that, uh, really, to diminish it by uh, somehow uh, not uh, looking at these um, requests from the government seriously uh, was a mistake. Uh, we're, we're giving you information on 1,931 corporations, uh, on 1,271 government entities uh, across 45 different departments and agencies. I mean, this is an enormous amount of information. And uh, Secretary Gates himself uh, said to us in an interview that uh, 
that he can't even get this type of information about his own office and who contracts all of the contractors within his own office. People recognize that this is a problem, and I think that the Washington Post should really be given an enormous amount of credit for putting the resources into this over a two-year period uh, in order to present something that I hope will be the foundation of a new national debate about this whole question. Bill Arkin, what's Liberty Crossing? Liberty Crossing is the, uh, is the uh, name, the nickname, uh, for the new complex of buildings that has gone up in McLean, Virginia, that is home to the Director of National Intelligence, the CIA's National Counterterrorism Center, other counterterrorism task forces, and the National Counterproliferation Center. We highlight the buildings around Washington that have been created since 9-11, because we thought that it was a very tangible representation of government. It's often hard to really talk about government in terms of money, because the billions, after a while, begin to just uh, gla glaze over. Uh, but, but we thought, you know, our approach was going to be, we know that everything that happens happens somewhere, and we're going to find out where it happens. And, 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 and lo and behold, as we began to map this alternative geography of America, one of the things that we discovered was that uh, these guys have been on a fabulous building spree since 9-11. Uh, there have been uh, over 33 buildings in the Washington, D.C. area alone, encompassing 17 million square feet, which is four times the size of the Pentagon. And there are more uh, underway. Uh, the NSA and others are building and planning to build even more office space. So the reality is that, uh, I think, in my research, I found that there was only one civilian agency that's had, that's had the privilege of building a new headquarters uh, since 9-11 in Washington, and that's the Department of Transportation. But, but, but this is a very tangible way of seeing uh, 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 this in your backyard, in reality, in a real physical location. And one of the phenomena that is also associated with 9-11 is that these locations, like Liberty Crossing, are, are, are undisclosed locations, meaning you can't look them up in a phone book. Uh, it has a cover address. It's not publicly uh, uh, bragged about in terms of where it is, although it's obvious where it is to anyone who goes by. And that in itself is sort of a, a, an odd uh, uh, manufacture from 9-11, which is that these government agencies on their own, with really no consideration of national security, uh, can just decide what's going to be disclosed, what's going to be undisclosed. And as far as I can see, it's, it's random to the agency and its power, and it has nothing to actually do with the security of the buildings or the people who work inside them. The National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, the new $1.8 billion headquarters, um, the fourth largest federal building in the area, um, in Springfield, right near Dulles Airport? No, in Springfield, Virginia, it's uh, down south near Fort Belvoir. Uh, this is a, uh, a, a gigantic facility that's going, to, that's going up right now. It's going to house 8,500 workers of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. I mean, they are going to uh, leave uh, their older buildings that are scattered throughout Washington. But you know what? They're going to be uh, uh, in well-appointed offices. And, and they'll be in one facility in Washington, and, 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 and they will obviously, I assume, be able to do their work better. But it's just one of many. It's just one of many agencies that probably most Americans have never heard of within the national security and intelligence establishment. And, 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 as, and, and as we found, you know, there are, there are 39 new construction starts this year alone nationwide of buildings going up for various pieces of the intelligence, homeland security, and military communities. The growth of the military budget, Bill Arkin, since 9-11? Well, you know, it's hard to say even what we spend on national security anymore, Amy. I, I, I guess we say we spend a half a trillion dollars now on national security. Uh, but with sup 